Amen. Praise the eternal word of God. Amen. Praise the Alpha and Omega. Praise to the one who loved us so much that he sent his only son to die on the cross for the sin of mankind. No other name. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no any other name we will pardon beside Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the name that every tongue confesses that he is the Lord. He is the name that every human being will hear and say he is the Lord. He is Amen. The Lord of all. Christian scripture teaches in the beginning man, God created man and woman his own image. Yeah. As God created man and woman, God called that it was very good. Soon after the creation, we read from the Bible in Genesis account, man and woman sin against God, man and woman sin against one another, also they sin against creation. Image of God is broken. Yeah. As God created man and woman, his, his own image, man and woman broke the image of God. Throughout the scripture, we see that God sent message. God told us how God is going to heal that broken yeah. image and how God is going to fix that separation when yes. man and woman sin against God. He had a plan. Scripture tells us the solution is Lord Jesus yes. Christ. 2,000 years ago, Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Word of God, come and died on the cross for the sin of mankind, mm -hmm. that the image of God mm -hmm. can be healed. Mm -hmm. With his death on the cross, men and women are made right with God. We repent and we fix our eyes to Lord Jesus Christ. There is a, some commonality in this one. Mm. We look at Islamic teachings and then we say there was something, there was something wrong, there was something wrong in Islamic teachings. There was something in Islamic teachings. Men and women mm. are separated from God yeah. as well. Yeah. Christian scripture teaches when God created men and women, God was in relationship with them. God was walking and talking with mankind. God was in fellowship. The moment sin takes place, mm. that perfect fellowship has been broken. Mm. There is something similar in Islam. Yeah, something similar, but also the picture you get from Islam is, is actually very confused. It's not clear. But there's one thing that we have in common in the sense that right at the beginning, just as Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden in Genesis 3, we also have, according to the Quran, that Adam and Eve were expelled from that garden. Um, but it's not completely clear why, or rather the reasons are slightly different. Um, and what's very interesting about what the Quran has to say is what it, it says in the Bible that this God even warns Adam and Eve right in the beginning you must not eat from this tree because you will, because it will lead to death you will surely die but Adam and Eve in the Quran get no such warning about that there's no sense that that, that sin their their disobeying God will lead to death so just so are you trying to tell me all knowing Allah with all of his wisdom and with all of his loving character failed to tell there was only two human beings they failed to tell them what are the responsibilities and roles they have in that garden you'd have thought he'd tell he'd tell them that but then He's you know all loving are you sure he didn't tell them he didn't receive no no he just didn't feel like it i guess okay. doing something else um uh, and yet um actually uh, Islam does not teach fallenness in the same way that Christianity does. Christianity teaches that every single one of us, because we're not in that garden, uh, has been affected by Adam and Eve's sin. If you like, we've inherited their spiritual nature, which is um, there's physical death in the world, and spiritually speaking, we're cut off from God. We're not in his presence, we're not in the garden. Now, in Islam, Muslims have the same problem, but they don't know why. So every single Muslim is not in that garden either, uh, but they just don't know why they're not there. And what the Quran tells 
uh, tells us about um, uh, the, the state, if you like, if you like, Islamic original sin is very different. On the one hand, it says it has this, contra, uh, this, this concept of fitra, if you like, it's a kind of state of natural belief. It's the sense that even babies, even little babies, are born as Muslims with a natural inclination to uh, to worship. Let me read you where that hadith uh, hadith that supports this view. Okay, sorry, this is from the Quran, Surah 30, 30. Sorry. So direct your face towards the religion, inclining the truth. Adhere to the fitra of Allah upon which he has created people. No change should there be in the creation of Allah. That is the correct religion, but most people do not know. That's Every man and woman are created to be Muslim at the first place. Mm -hmm. As the time went on, suddenly Allah decided people to end up Christian, Jew, or pagan, or Buddhist. Yeah, and it's interesting because this is why in Islam, if somebody becomes a Muslim, they call them a revert, not a convert. Okay, someone who has, if you like, reverted to their natural state rather than converted. Whereas in Christianity, someone turns from their sins, converts, turns around, and starts to follow Christ. So there is something happened in the garden when, when men and women did something, they were kicked out from the garden according to the Quran. Mm. They've done something and God kicked them out. Mm. But the question is, why today there are lots of Muslims in this world, mm. yet they are not in the garden? Mm. So what does Islamic tradition tell us on this? Um, so, uh, what Islamic tradition, it's interesting because even though it doesn't teach uh, as clear a doctrine as original sin, there are certain verses and certain hadith that would seem to suggest that there is a concept of original sin in Islam. Let me read you one, for example. Sorry, just one. So, according to Islamic tradition, yes. according to Islamic tradition, Adam and Eve kicked out from the garden because they did something. Mm -hmm. well, today, there are lots of Muslims in this world, mm -hmm. they are not in the garden because Adam and Eve did something on behalf of them. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the hadith for that. Okay, let's look at this. Okay. This is, sorry, this is uh, from the Quran, Surah 2.30. And when thy Lord said to the angels, I am placing a vice regent upon the earth, that's Adam, okay? They said, wilt thou place therein one who will work corruption therein and shed bloods? Literally, the Arabic is plural, bloods. Now let's think about it. Did Adam shed blood? Did Adam shed blood? Does anyone know? No, Adam didn't shed any blood, but we know that Adam's descendants, okay, uh, Cain, for example, he did shed blood. So it's talking really about a, a consequence that is much more far reaching uh, than Adam. But just I wanted to go back to your point a second, Hatim, because you said no Muslim is in the garden because by implication they're being punished on behalf of somebody else. But doesn't go, that, go against the Quran that says that you're not supposed to, that no one can bear the burden of another? Yeah. Odd. Very odd. It's called so part of Islam. So why are Muslims are in this world? Because what Adam and Eve did in the garden according to Islam. And also we look at from the Islamic tradition, the Islamic tradition backs that up. Can you read the uh, hadith? Which one, sorry? Following up hadith? Yeah. Which one? This one. When any human being is born, Satan touched him and at both sides of the body, which his two fingers except Jesus, the son of Mary, whom Satan tried to touch but failed, for he touched the uh, placenta cover instead. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? According to Islamic tradition, Satan has touched every single person, by the way, that includes Muhammad. I think it is all Muslims, Muhammad, Muhammad's father, even his children. But the only person that it doesn't include is Jesus. How interesting. As Satan touched everyone, before Satan touched everyone, Adam and Eve already kicked out from the garden. They kicked out from the garden. Muslims are in this world because Satan just give them a hand. Well, Satan. Jesus. Yeah, who cares it's Jesus? Satan, isn't it? Shaitan, Shaitan. Yeah. give them hand for Muslims to end up in this world, which according to Islamic teachings. So it includes, that, as you said, sister, that includes Muhammad was sinful who has been touched by Satan. Yet it was only Lord Jesus Christ who had no sin, yet he became sin for us. Mm. It is only Lord Jesus Christ who Satan did not touch, yet Satan was able to touch all of us, mm. including Muslims, including you, including me, including everyone. Mm. Yeah, and it says his 
another hadith for you, which again goes away from this kind of concept of innocence and points far more towards original sin. This is from Sunan Ibn Majah. It was narrated from Anas that the Messenger of Allah said, every son of Adam commits sin, and the best of those who commit sin are those who repent. But the tragic thing about Islam is that it says that everybody sins, but it gives no solution. It doesn't give Muslims any way of being able to be cleansed from their sins. One sec, one sec, one sec. One sec, one sec. I've got a question, I've got a question. You know, since the military is standing here, there's been nothing but casting Muslims. Have you anything to say better than a Christian? Talk about Christianity. We have talk, a talk about, Yeah, we talk have. Talk about Jesus. It, 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 we have what been. kind of person it, Jesus was? What kind of person? You're not, not, not listening. You're not listening to us. You're not, not listening cast, to us. Not listening. Not You're not listening to us, sir. Not, not listening. We have been talking about Christianity. We've been talking no, about original sin. Let's sit. Let's sit. What are you doing? Try and mix it. No, we're not talking about Muslims. We're talking about... Listen. Listen. Are you Allah? No. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, sir, sir. Sir, Allah. Sorry? Does she look like Allah? Look Allah. Do I look like Allah? Why do, why do so, she need to look she, like Allah? Why do she need to look like Allah? Listen to me. If you are a Christian, she cup a flower come out of your it mouth. It was Allah who cast men and women from his garden. So, therefore, she cannot be Allah because she did not cast anyone. Is the lecture she teaches us something very simple? There is something Adam and Eve did in the garden. Whatever they did, they end up in this painful and broken world with the plan of Allah. And Allah states, no, no son of Adam ever committed sin. And Islam, sorry, that Islamic tradition. Also, Islamic tradition again states, it was only Jesus who had no sin. It was only Jesus Satan did not touch. So, there is a commonality between Islam and Christianity. None of us today, in the presence of God, according to Christian scripture, we, were, we are not there because everyone sinned. Everyone, in the beginning, Adam and Eve sin, and we are our relationship with God is broken. Yeah. According to Islamic teachings, Adam and Eve did something, Allah kicked them out from the paradise. And every Muslim in this world, because Allah kicked us, Adam and Eve. Yeah. And just to finish, really, like, the solution? like yeah. I mean, all the Islamic view does is it throws up problems. It throws up problems for Muslims. It's, they don't know if, if they repent of their sins, if it will lead to forgiveness or not. They don't know. They don't know whether or not Allah is truly just. We don't know if terrible sins that have been committed, that Allah has any just solution for that. They don't know whether or not sin will be punished, which sins will be punished, which won't. They, 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 they don't know. They, we say that, you know, it also says in the Quran, in the Hadith rather, that every, if, if people were, uh, if Allah was to wipe out everyone with sin, everyone would be wiped out. How do you answer that as a Muslim? What do they do with little children who are they allegedly born in fitra? Will they be wiped out too? It just throws up lots and lots of questions. But in Christianity, we have the problem diagnosed. But we also have the solution. We have the solution that's provided directly by God's mercy, by Jesus, the second person of the Trinity, coming himself. God incarnate comes to earth and invites us to come to him and put all of our sins on the cross so that we can have mercy and forgiveness. And he even says that's the only way. Not only that, but he makes it so clear. He makes it so clear. He says, whoever believes in me is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in me stands condemned already because they've not believed in the name of God's one and only son. It's black and white. Yes, it can be a difficult teaching to get your head around and to follow and obey, but God makes it clear and he and Jesus is worth it. Yes, we all, we all acknowledge, we all sin against God, we all sin against one another, but it is only the blood of Jesus Christ gives us a full solution with the repentance. It is only the blood of Jesus Christ takes us back to the place where we were walking and talking with mankind. It is only the blood of Lord Jesus Christ.
Let's have right with God. Therefore, repent and come to God Jesus Christ. Amen.